I'm Leah Chang, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Today I'm sitting down with filmmaker Jennifer Lin to talk about her new documentary, Ten Times Better, and George Lee, an 88-year-old blackjack dealer in the noisy heart of Las Vegas, whose remarkable life has been forgotten until now. It's a uniquely American story of a Hong Kong-born refugee who made history as a teenage sensation in George Balanchine's original The Nutcracker, becoming the first Asian to dance for the New York City Ballet. What did you do before this? I was a dancer. George Lee, a Chinese boy from School of American Ballet, was the original Chinese in Nutcracker. Oh, I've heard so much about you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> My mother warned me, you are going to America, it's all white people, and you better be ten times better. Remember that, ten times better. What does it mean for you to see your life story on a big screen? Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's hard to see, you know, to see myself to be dancing, you know what I mean, in a way, you know what I mean? But uh, and I see I can criticize myself too, you know what I mean? Something is not right, you know what I mean? But it's uh, interesting, you know what I mean, to see that, you know what I mean? To see myself on the screen, you know what I mean? I haven't seen that much until <laughs> she's in the until she unearthed all the archives. Yeah, she's the one who get me all back to the dancing, and uh, it was so hard for me for a while to come back again. You know what I mean? But she insisted, you know, so, um, <laughs> and here I am, thanks yeah. to her. Uh, here I am. And what does it mean to you to be? having the world premiere here at Lincoln Center. Oh, it's it's an honor and a privilege. It, it's an honor and a privilege also to tell George's story yeah. and to share it with the world. So, I mean, the actually the idea for the story, for the movie, came out of the archives here at the New York Public Library. So this is perfect. Yeah. Now, where does the title of the film come from? George told me a story. He said when he was in the refugee camp, in the Philippines from 49 to, to 51. Um, they were about ready to leave and be resettled in New York City. Uh, George's mother was a Polish ballerina. His father was a Chinese acrobat. Uh, and George's Polish mother told him as they were ready to set sail, we're going to America. I should let George say. My mother's the one told me, well, are you going to America as the white people, should I? And you're Asian. You gotta be ten times better what you do. Otherwise you're not gonna go be. You know, mm -hmm. you can't be, you know, be around them. And that's why it stuck to me. Ten times better. <laughs> now where were you born and raised? I was born in uh, Hong Kong and uh, and I raised there and then uh, like forty one we went back to Shanghai and then we stayed there and then uh, during the war, uh, we separated. My father was wind up in Kuming, and uh, we wind up in Shanghai. It was the Japanese occupation. It was tough, you know what I mean, a little bit, you know what I mean? But I was little, you know what I mean? And my mother know what, what to do, you know what I mean? So she, we are, I was taking class with the Russian people, because there are a lot of Russian dancers there, you know what I mean? And they said, why? Well, I told my mother, I said, why don't you teach him some and a little number, you know what I mean, like uh, polka, Russian dance, or sailor dance, you know, something like that, and doing in the nightclub. So we did, you know, my mother figured out what well, we are going to try, because we are going to make some kind of living, you know what I mean, sure. because it was so hard to make life there. And that's how it was, you know I mean, and then also too, you know, when you work during this war time, we don't even take the money, we take some food, like rice and things like that, because, you know, there was shortage of it, you know what I mean, so. And that's how we survive. You know what I mean? so, and then when they start, uh, how called, 49, we gotta leave. And my mother decided, well, we better leave, you know what I mean? Because she was worried about me because, you know, the communists going to come in and go, what to do with me, you know what I mean? They, so we went to a refugee camp for two years. And then after that, even after that, 
when the, the, the steady uh, people start moving out, you know, means a lot of people went to Australia and, uh, and uh, every place. And my mother is the figure one, well, we might as well go to Australia. They won't let me go. They say no Asian. So my mother said, we're going to keep my kid here and they're going to live with her. You know what I mean? No. no. What went through your mind when you got the call from Jennifer? <laughs> I've been telling everybody, it was a shock. I was shocked. I don't, anybody going to call me for about dancing? You know what I mean? Who care about it? You know what I mean? And it was a big shock to me, you know, when she said, no, I want to talk to you. And I mean, at first, I don't even believe it. Okay, that's the one thing. Because, like I say, everybody call you, know, and tell you things. But Jennifer was insisting. I said, you the ballet dancer? I said, yes, I'm the ballet dancer. But who going to care about it you know, at the time? You know? I mean, of course, I was working in the casino mm -hmm. in the Four Queens dealing. So what did you have in mind when you decided you wanted to make this short film? I, I wanted to be able to tell George's story. I mean, I had to convince George that he was a pioneer. Mm. He didn't believe it. Yeah. Uh, so with this short, short film, it's only 30 minutes, but I really would like for people to know George's contribution to the world of ballet and to Broadway dancing, too. <clears throat> Before I come to New York? Yes. I was in the refugee camp. And uh, and then my friend, my father's friend, you know I mean, sponsored us went to come to New York. And they gave me the permission you know, to bring us to New York. So he sponsored us and we moved to New York. And he left his apartment for us and he moved out. And I never see him after that, you know what I mean? Then I see. Jennifer told me that he was taking class in ballet, ballet theater. I was shocked, you know, I mean, how come he don't even contact me, you know, I mean, and say something, you know, I mean, but thanks to him, he was the sponsor, you know, I mean, to, for me to be in America, you know, I mean, so. And he was the one who introduced me to the school, American Ballet, and uh, take, to go and take a class. And uh, like I said, two years, I haven't done anything because in the Philippines it was warm, too hot. My mother said, no, you don't do nothing here. So I come here two years and I, he introduced me to school and uh, I went to the first class, was the advanced class. I said, oh gee, after two years I haven't done anything, I'm gonna go to advanced class, you know what I mean? So I walk in the class and I was shocked because I see 20 people, you know what I mean? All girls and things, like that, but I don't see any Asian now. And I walk in, you know, I just know how strange it is to me, you know, because I'm, they would expect that. Then we took the class, and my teacher, the, the day was there, he's a Russian, Hobukov. He was very strict. And uh, we did some combination, you know what I mean? And then he calls me up and said, what's the name of the combination? And I was panicked. Because I haven't done nothing. I don't expect anybody to uh, no sh come up and tell me to, you know what I mean? So I try to explain him in Russian. Wow. And he look at me and say, <laughs> you speak Russian? He walks away. <laughs> he was so... He knew that you knew more than he did. Yeah, well, I was okay. The class was easy. I was surprised because, I, like I say, two years I haven't done nothing. And I walk into the advanced class. And that was a shock because, uh, yeah, it's nothing. You know, that's why he picked me up for the combination because I did the combination good. And I was ne never expect him to call me up and ask me what's the name. And that's what happened. <laughs> I get panic. How old were you when you came to uh, your... 15 years old. 15. When did you meet Balanchine? Well, um, <clears throat> I really don't meet him that much because he just come in and he goes, you know what I mean? He, don't, uh, he didn't teach class, but uh, I just meet him, and I just see him go, going in from the office, and uh, that's it. You know, I have no uh, very much contact with him. You know what I mean? But until a nutcracker, you know what I mean? that's when I get contact. You know, he took me uh, in the classroom. He said, I didn't audition, but he just took me in and just asked me, you know what, you know, George, he said, we talk in Russian, you know what I mean? He said, do you know? Do you do do you do anything 
good, no mean anything you have, no mean. I say, well, I'll show him some steps and say this and that and that and that. And then he say, oh, that's good. And then he combined all these things and he make the not correct for me for, you know, to do that. And that's how it was done. It took about 15 minutes because it was so easy, you know what I mean? But 15 minutes to of your life, but yeah. 15 minutes of your lifetime yeah. <laughs> of dancing, right? Uh, dancing too, yeah. <laughs> and that was a sh no? uh, flower, I mean, not correct had come out, you know what I mean? So, and that's what Jennifer was looking and find me. So when you were going through the archives, we're here at the New York Public Library for the Performing Arts, the, Dan the Jerome Robbins Dance Division. When you were going through the archives for another documentary that you were working on, how did you discover George? So I was interested in the history of the Nutcracker and Phil Chan, uh, who is uh, you know part of the final bell for Yellow Face movement, he had told me that there were a lot of great archives in, at the New York Public Library. So I was looking through publicity photos from the Nutcracker. 1954 is when George Balanchine premiered his version of the Nutcracker. And uh, as I was looking at like pictures of Maria Tallchief and Andrei Glevsky, I saw photos from the T divertissement and it featured a young Asian dancer. And I was like, well, this is interesting. I didn't know that City Ballet had Asian dancers back mm. then. And his name was George Lee. And he got wonderful reviews in the newspaper, as well as, you know, dance magazines. And there was um, a soloist who took over the role for him, who said in an oral history at the New York Public Library, he said that um, no one could do what George Lee did. He was wonderful. And Balanchine choreographed a piece for him that none of us have been able to, to duplicate. And the, what was interesting, though, is after the Nutcracker, there was no other mm. indication of George dancing with, with City Ballet. And, and I was curious about what happened to him. He was young. He was certainly good. And, you know, if you're good enough for Balanchine, you're probably good enough for, for a lot of ballet companies. But George sort of disappeared. So I became really obsessed with finding him. Mm. So I used to be a newspaper reporter, so I know how to do investigations. We're so. dogged. Yeah. So I, it took me about a month or so to find George, but I found him. I had some help from others. Um, Arlene Yu was a, a archivist here at the uh, New York Public Library. She was used to be in charge of the uh, Jerome Robbins collection. Mm -hmm. And so she gave me what she knew, and we combined forces, and I was ultimately able to track George down, and I left him a long voice message on December 29th, 19, or 19, 2022, and I said, I'm a filmmaker from Philadelphia. I've been looking for you for, for weeks. Uh, I want to come out and interview you because you're a ballet pioneer. And George basically thought I was crazy. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I mean, after all, so many years go by, no, nobody, nobody say anything about it. I mean, nobody say hi to me, you know, from the show. I was working at the time, it was in the Four Queens as a dealer, mm. you know what I mean? So, to me, it was a shock. You know, Flower Dumb Song is funny, though, because <coughs> I was traveling with uh, Andrei Glebsky on a tour, and there was audition for the Chinese, you know what I mean? Thing? And I figured, well, better, maybe I can call up the office, you know what I mean, and tell them. I say, I, I like to audition, but I, I'm traveling with the show. They say, so don't worry about it. They say, when you come back, you go, go come in and, and to the theater and we find out, you know what I mean? And that's how I did. I went there with another girl. I think I, I wasn't sure it was Linda Yurt or, or yeah. someone else. Mm -hmm. we, I did the blue but there I, I had audition. And all this, my colleague from, you know, from Flowerdom, they all vision, they thought, where did this guy come from? No, because the old jazz, you know, had the ballet dancer flying around, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, you know, I mean, I was gone home, and I was waiting for the elevator, and Gene Kelly come by. And he said, oh, George, he said, you know, I know you like to be the ballet dancer, you know, I mean, but he said, why don't you try something new? And I thought, oh, something new, you know, I mean. And he said, well, take some this job, you know, I mean, it's something new, you're going to learn something new, and you get paid for it. And I thought, oh, that sounds good. 
But I go home, I talk to my mother about it. And then, then she decided, well, maybe you should try it. You know what I mean? And that's how I get in, in the flower drum. So. Was it exciting for you to be on Broadway? or? Yes. Yeah, because it's something different. You see, ballet companies are different. On Broadway, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it is just, you know, yeah, I enjoy it, though. And what did you work on after Flower Drum Song? I did feel the Broadway show I did. The last one uh, that I liked was the Baker Street. That's what I've been telling <clears throat> Jennifer about it. I mean, because the choreographer was uh, Lee Theodore, and a uh, poor lady, she passed, late, you know, passed away already. And she was a uh, dancer, her herself, jazz. And uh, she know me, and because she we. I think I did some TV with her, you know what I mean? And she showed me, and I think I hurt myself. I did the Russian dance and I hit my, my leg. Mm -hmm. And they told me to do this I mean, 10 times, you know what I mean? On a cement, you know what I mean? And I think I hurt myself with, I did that with another boy, Russian dance. And uh, instead of keep the camera on him, they keep the camera on me limping around. <laughs> 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 and that's why uh, the little there was uh, his partner grabbed me and carried me out. Mm. And I think that's how she remember me. And so when I auditioned for her, for the Baker Street, you know what I mean? And she liked me, you know, and then, like I told her, just a joke. She showed me some steps to do, you know, like a tap dance, you know, from one corner to the other corner. I did all this thing and good. And then she said, George, you know, you did the step good, but I can't hear the sound. <laughs> because, you, you know, when you do steps, no, you got you to hear sounds. Right. I didn't have no sound, but I did the step good. <laughs> and she said, that was good, but I didn't see no sound. <laughs> but she kept me down. And that's why when she did a good dancing for the four boys and, and things like that in Baker Street. And, and she always, you know, I mean, every time if I do... You see, working in a, on any Broadway shows, you know, and then I come by, she always take me, you know what I mean? Hire me. What was it like to see your flower drum castmates today? Flower it's fun, song. though, because, you know I mean, so many years ago, you know what I mean? We all getting older, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it was so nice to see it, you know what I mean? To then talk about you know, how it was, you know what I mean? Everything. And it, it's nice to, to see the same group, you know what I mean? We, we work together. Now, how did you make your way to Las Vegas? Yeah, I did uh, in Vegas a few times. I did and you performed there? Yeah. I did uh, with the flower drum in 1961 in Thunderbird Hotel. With the uh, Carol Channing. Yeah, yeah Carol uh, Channing. And Ten Stealth Statman, Party. yeah, in the River Hotel. Yeah. You know, and then travel with her to England, and then we come back. And then I quit for a while, and then the, the audition come in, and my friend come up. Hey, George, you go to audition this. Uh, Show gonna go a new one, no mean to be and I thought what do you are gonna want me to do? You no know, Vegas you no know, boys they want the six feet tall, you know what I mean, and, and looking good, you know what I mean? And here I'm a little shrimp like me going there and no, no, I said no. But they say, Come on, just for the hell with it, I mean so I said, Okay, let's go. I just do it. And they hire me. <laughs> I was so shocked when they hired me too. And they said, You can you can you do it, we did we keep you. Okay, <laughs> and that was uh, getting to because of the party, and that was my last show. Okay. But yeah. After that, I went to dealing, you know, and, and as since then, I've been dealing till 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 this day. Perfect. Shall we tell the audience where they can see the film on Saturday? On Saturday, it'll be at Film at Lincoln Center, the Dance on Camera Festival, and hopefully, it'll be appearing at other festivals across the country. I'm so excited. I can't tell you. I have so many colleagues, actors, Asian American actors, singers, singers and dancers. And when they saw, oh my God, it's here. When they saw your New York Times story, they're all just <laughs> raving and are so proud that you are going to have your story told. Yeah. Well, I'm proud too. But like my mother said, you know, you're Asian, you better be 10 times better. And I did better. And I mean, uh, like I did everything. Some people cannot do it. I mean, like flower drum. When I left, there are two people. They hide. They can't do it. I mean, so I'm, I'm just happy that I can prove that I did good. And thanks to <laughs> this young lady who really helped me. Oh, I like it. You're calling me young. Thank you so much. So that's why. Thank you.
with um, Jennifer Lynn, who brought me back. They remind me about what Sibali is. So I thank you for her from my bottom of my heart, bring me up about this. And that's the only thing I have. And now I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Until next time.